Good afternoon, everyone. It's Dr. Allison with Little Black Bag Medicine. And today I'm taking a break from writing my hormone balancing guide. And saw that a couple people had posted on my question across my pages about, you know, where do you start balancing your hormones? Like what is the most confusing to you or overwhelming? And like everything is so complicated with women's hormones that I don't know. And that's kind of how I feel. It's like I'm writing this book and I'm like, oh my God, there's so much information and ugh, like, where do you start? So what I'd like to share with you today is a little bit about like my process and how I take a look at hormones and where I, where I begin my focus. So let's see. I don't even know because everyone's so different. So I had a couple calls this week and I love when women and men too, men don't do it as much, but we research and we read and we take all the quizzes and some people are like, I think my, my estrogen's really high. Some people can't, I think my testosterone's really high or really low. I don't know. I've been taking this herb to raise it. I've been taking this thing to lower it. I've been using oils to just balance and it's not working. I don't feel any better. And so the number one thing I think where, look at me, I'm pointing at you, okay? The number one thing with hormones especially is that you can't guess. You cannot guess if you're, it doesn't matter if you're cycling, if you're perimenopausal, if you're postmenopausal, you can't just guess and hope that you got it right. Um, you probably will get it right. Um, you might not. You can't just go based off of symptoms because a lot of times high estrogen symptoms look like super low progesterone levels. And so are we talking about is one really high and one really low or is the ratio off and they're both really low or they're both really high? So start with testing. You can do blood. Blood is okay. It's not the best. Get it drawn on like day 21 of your cycle. I always like to use saliva testing. Again, do that on day 21 of your cycle. I like doing the saliva testing because you can track cortisol and do the cortisol testing with it so you can see, are your adrenals playing a factor in it? The answer is almost always yes, or is it coming from your brain, or is it coming from your thyroid? And so testing, 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 testing. If your doctor says, I will not test your hormones, there's nothing wrong with you, I think you're crazy, get a new doctor right away. I can't, every woman that I deal with with hormones um, has a story like that. My doctor just wants me to be on birth control. My doctor says my birth control is not affecting my brain. My doctor, oh my God, please. Or especially if you're postmenopausal and you're bleeding or you're having fibrocystic issues or like you're still having hot flashes 10 years later. Like we got to fix that. We have to fix that. So get testing done. Um, have it evaluated. Call me, right? Super easy. And then we still have to do blood testing. So... The reason for that is we have to see, is it your thyroid? Is it your brain? Is it your liver clearance? Is there something going on? Is there an infection? Like, let's rule all these things out. Let's not just say low progesterone and take a pill or get on birth control because those aren't the answers. It's not going to fix the underlying cause. So number one, get your hormones tested analyze what's going on with your thyroid, what's going on with your cholesterol levels and your triglycerides. Are you anemic? Is this causing issues? Like there's so many things. This is my books like getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And I'm like, no, 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 it's not important. But everyone's so different. And the reason why you're having these issues is probably completely different than the person sitting next to you saying, oh, just take Tribulus, you'll be fine. Like, no, 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 no. So testing, then what would I do? We get your test back and then we just address it from there, right? What, what is the issue? So part one, I'm not going to say number one because everyone's different, right? So part one is going to be, yes, maintaining your blood sugar, keeping that stable because you don't want to send yourself on a roller coaster ride because that will tank your adrenals. It'll increase inflammation. It's going to give you brain fog. It's going to make you super grumpy. And then you're going to try and take some supplement and it's not going to work. 
and you're going to wonder why we're recommending these things to you, you have to keep your blood sugar stable. And especially for women, um, going into menopause, your adrenals will take over and they'll make those hormones for you. So if you go into menopause super inflamed, super adrenal fatigued, and everything's messed up, you don't have good glycogen store, like you're going to be a miserable human being. And that is so sad because I don't want you to be miserable. Um, so blood sugar, yes, yeah, super important. Don't skip breakfast. Don't eat carbs alone. Don't eat fruit alone. Don't wake up and have a muffin and coffee and be on with your day. It's going to destroy your adrenals. It's going to destroy your brain. And in the end, you're going to have hormone issues. And the longer, and if your hormone issues are coming because it's the end stage of adrenal fatigue and blood sugar and diabetes, it's going to take that much longer to heal. You see what I'm saying? So like we have to work all the way back down to just to get to hormones. So when people come to me and they say, oh, I need you to fix my hormones. Like we still have to adjust. We have to go back to the beginning and still make sure food is on point. Exercise is right. Okay. Adrenal health and thyroid. So one testing for both of those. Two, eating consistently. Three, um, addressing and making sure that your thyroid is functioning, that you don't have any autoimmune conditions, and that you're getting the right amount of food and iodine and calcium. All of those things are really important for both of those. I like to use adaptogenic support, which means we don't want to force the organs one way or the other. We just want to allow the body to use what it needs to bring them back into balance. I also really like to use glandular support, which means that you're getting like a small part of that gland um, from an animal. Yes. So the thyroid, the pituitary, every organ, especially the adrenals, and just allow the organs to rebuild themselves. A lot of times people are using oils or supplements, which is awesome, but they're not getting anywhere. And essentially it's because they're like, come on, adrenals work, come on, adrenals work. And there's nothing there. There's no energy. There's no the cells are dead. The DNA is like, eh, I don't know what's happening. So they can't rebuild. So once we rebuild those organs, all of those things will work a lot faster. All right. Part three, nutrition. Fatty acids are really important. Making sure that you're getting good fats in because good fats will, one, lower inflammation, support your immune system, and all of our hormones come from cholesterol. So when we look at how hormones are made, the chart always starts with cholesterol. And then it goes down into pregnenolone and then it just breaks into a million pieces. So <laughs> making sure that you have healthy cholesterol levels, that you are eating good and healthy fats, like your omega-3s, um, some of your omega-6s, we get enough of those typically, coconut oil, um, avocados, like it doesn't matter where it comes from. Just making make sure that you get enough, take your supplements, take your lifelong vitality, get that done, and that will help your hormone production, we'll say that. So I see a lot of people who are like, oh, my cholesterol is like 112, I'm so healthy. And it's like, mm, no, that's really not healthy. Like we still wanna be around 200, that's a really good. And for women, as we get older, the higher the cholesterol levels tend to be more protective for the brain against dementia and Alzheimer's issues. It helps you get through menopause in a healthy way because you're supporting your adrenals with these with these good fats. So they're not like scrounging around looking for cholesterol to make hormones. It's there, it's healthy, it's in the right ratios. Making sure your triglycerides are in the right ratios as well. All very important, which goes back to testing, right? Okay, that's part three, what's part four? I already forgot. That's okay. So <laughs> it'll come back to me. Oh, liver. There it is. Liver clearance. So liver clearance and really gut clearance. So what that means is that when we use hormones, our body creates them, they attach to the cell like a lock and key. The cell does their job. And then the hormone detaches, goes into the bloodstream. The liver will package it up. It's called conjugation. I, I like to use like non-medical words because I want you to understand. So no, I'm not using ex perfect physiological terms and conjugation and all the different levels. So just bear with me. I love you. I just want to make it easy. 
So it packages it up in a pretty little package and puts it into your gallbladder. And then when you eat, your gallbladder releases its bile because it's triggered and the bile goes into the gut. And then you can get rid of everything, right? So if your liver is overwhelmed, the hormones are going to keep circling. If you have gallbladder blockage and the bile can't release or you're making so much hormones that your liver just congeals all of the hormones and then it gets stuck in your gallbladder and then you have to get your gallbladder taken out and then it goes into your gut and your gut is leaky or it's like broken up, those hormones are just going to go right back into your blood circulation. So you have this vicious cycle where, oh my gosh, especially if you're detoxing or you're doing a program and you feel like worse, it's because you're, you're forcing so much back through in this vicious cycle. You have to heal the gut. You have to get those, the lining of the gut sutured up, nice and tight, nice and healthy, so things don't go back into circulation. You have to make sure that your liver is able to handle the clearance level that it needs to have, that all of those pathways are open, ready to go. You have enough methyl groups to attach and package. Um, glutathione is really important and just really good nutrition overall. So if you have MTHFR and you're struggling with liver pain and gallbladder pain or hormone issues, you can supplement with actually just extra methyl groups to help aid this clearance. So you're not just cycling hormones through your body and driving yourself crazy and everybody else around you. Um, so liver clearance and gut clearance kind of go hand in hand for me and making those sure those are all cleared up. Then you get to worry about the actual hormones. Um, and it, it seems so boring because it's not like, oh, here's how to lower your estrogen or here's how to raise your progesterone. Here's how to balance your testosterone. Because if you raise your progesterone or you need to lower your estrogen, but it's just like recycling in your body, then who cares? You can take supplements all day long, but it's not going to help. If it's just cycling through, your adrenals can't make the hormone. Like there's so many issues involved here. And... Then we can go into, well, what's what's going on with the ovaries? What's going on with your uterus? Are you polycystic? Do you have fibroids? Do you have endometriosis? And start going down that really long list. And that becomes so personalized and specific that I don't want to sit here and you can pick up any book and I'll tell you what to try. And you can message me if you have questions and let me know what's going on and what you try, what you need help with. So... Yeah, I think that's it. I think that that's all you have to do to balance your hormones. You'll be great. Don't worry about it. Get your liver cleared. Um, super not specific, but just to give you just a little quick little baseline of how your body works, how you clear up hormones, how to, you know, understand what's going on so you can make the right decisions and stop guessing. So that's all you gotta do. Um, my book, I promised you guys, would be done by May 6th, I believe. I am going to do uh, a program with it, of course, so I'm trying to figure that out right now. So let me know what you think. You can get on the wait list. I'll post the, the link in the comments here for you. And this conversation is extremely expanded in there for you. We go through a lot. So we're going to heal you head to toe, I promise. All right, guys. Have a good day. I'll talk to you soon.